three. Hey everyone, Dr. Tim and Hillary for another session of the Dr. Tim's Aquatics podcast. How are you doing this morning, Hillary? I am doing good. I got my Dr. Tim's mug right here filled up with coffee. I even did a post this morning on Instagram letting people know that we were recording a podcast today. And if you're not up to date on our podcast, to go listen to them while we record. So when this one's out, they can just continue listening. That's it. All right. And today we are going to talk about fish food and more, and more specifically our beneficial, get it, fishal, fish food. <laughs> uh, and uh, fish food in general, I feel it's one of those areas that's greatly um, neglected. You know, it's, we just feed for, most people feed for ease or feed as if the fish were human. Um, and you spend all this time and, and money and then don't, don't understand or don't feed um, your fish and your corals and your other aquatic animals uh, well or correctly. So that's what we're going to review today, Hillary. Yep, and I am ready for it. We've been doing some videos on Instagram, um, just quick little things showing people like how easy it is to make the food. I love it. It's three steps. It is super easy. People think that when you do a DIY thing, it's this project that goes on and on and on. And it really doesn't. It, it takes less than five minutes to make it and then another hour to two hours to for it to set up in the freezer. Yep. So she's talking about our beneficial do-it-yourself fish food um it's a do it yourself make, make your own frozen food that's totally customizable which we'll get into but uh, we're going to step back a little bit and talk about um well let's talk about fish uh and feeding so we won't make this too complicated but it's it, as you've heard me preach and preach bacteria aren't human well fish aren't human either and fish don't have the same nutritional system in terms of how they digest food and where they get their nutrition as humans. And this is something, I, I don't know that a lot of people really know that or, or know what that means, Hillary. Yeah, I, I don't know that they do. There's like, for as much stuff as we talk about and we know with aquariums, there's really not a lot talked about fish nutrition and fish food and health and like how they process food. So I'm, right. I'm glad we're having this conversation. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you heard there's proteins and carbohydrates and fats and all that type of stuff for, for humans. And we tend to think, well, if it's good for a human, it's fine for a fish, a fish, fish will it'll nibble on anything. I mean, it'll put it, it's, it's kind of like a little baby that put anything in its mouth, but then maybe a fish is a little smarter. It spits it out. Um, sorry if I insulted anybody's babies, but um, the, the, the issue is that not everything a fish ingests, I mean, put, you know, eats is digestible or has any nutrition to it. And most of how we feed our aquatic animals is centered more on convenience for us rather than good nutrition for the fish. That is a really good way to put that. Yeah. Uh, we, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with pellets and flakes, but we tend to feed, you know, if you look in the broad spectrum of all types of fish we cover you know freshwater fish saltwater fish reef fish invertebrates and, and if you look the most common fish food is flakes and pellets and that's because it's convenient it can sit on the shelf by the tank doesn't have to be refrigerated lasts seemingly forever um and you just a few you know, throw some pellets in or crumble some flake food over the tank and you've done your fed your fish. So it's all convenient, but. And you don't have to get your hands dirty or like, I know a lot of people complain that they don't like how it smells or like, Ooh, that's gross. I feel like that's another factor. Right. Yeah. Um, but the biggest issue is that flakes and pellets 
a major component of them are carbs or, or the wheat. Most of them are made with some type of a wheat base because that's what holds everything together. And a major difference between fish and humans is that fish cannot digest wheat. They, they don't have an enzyme called amylase, which means that, that that's an enzyme that basically digests the wheat. And so the wheat is just a filler that passes through the fish or in extreme cases, and we take our little path that we always take off the main path here is the wife's tail. Your, your fancy goldfish is upside down. It's got a swim bladder problem. I would say that in probably less than 1% of the cases or one tenth of percent of the cases, an upside down goldfish is due to a swim bladder. Goldfish don't have a stomach. They have a very long intestine where they slowly dissolve food as it passes through. What are fish, what are goldfish generally eating? They're munching on veggies, aquatic, you know, plant material. Well, we feed them a pellet or a flake, which has a lot of wheat where they don't have the amylase enzyme. So that food gets stuck in their intestine. And bacteria start to break it down, good old friends, bacteria, and produce gas. The gas can't escape the intestine because the intestine is clogged. So it expands as the gas is produced. And basically, a little miniature Goodyear blimp is forming in the intestine of the goldfish. And that gas be, being lighter causes the fish to, you know, it swells up and you've got this big blimp inside the belly and it uh, causes the fish to go upside down. And the wife's tail, the part that's worked is if you have that upside down goldfish, you feed it brine shrimp or peas because that's roughage and they can digest the peas, you know, better and um, kind of clears, clears them out. And then the gas can escape and the intestine can go down to normal size and the fish can be uh, sw swim normally. So the moral of that is that if you feed, constantly feed a poor food or a food high in wheats and grains, chances are your goldfish is going to go upside down because it can't digest it. It's why fish get bloat. It's why fish, that long stringy poop that hangs on, it's you know, under a fish as it's swimming around. That's the stuff it cannot digest. And it's all due to the fact they don't have the amylase enzyme. So would you, would you say that they have to be gluten-free? I know that's a term that's thrown around a lot in human it, food, but it, it sounds like it kind of applies here. It definitely applies. It definitely applies. And it doesn't mean never feed them flake or pellet, but you've got to vary the diet. That's, that's a good thing that, you know, your doctor tells you all the nutrition to tell you as humans. And that's something we can use for, for all our aquatic animals is vary their diet. Because, you know, little bits not going to be bad, but just constantly getting, um, a heavy gluten-based diet because that's relatively historically been cheap versus putting vitamins and probiotics and coloring agents and, and other ingredients that are in there. And one thing, you know, a, a re most all the companies that make fish foods are reputable and they follow what are called uh, AFCO, American Association of F Feed Control Officials, AAFCO. And that handbook, which all states use, requires that you list on the back of a label the ingredients by the, the amount. The ingredients that is the most is first, the second most is second, the third most is third. So if you turn that label over and you see that it's got wheat or wheat byproducts and, and that type of stuff, you know that that food, what that, what's in there. And that's maybe not a food 
that you want to feed all the time. And there's a reason some foods are cheaper than others because they're using cheaper ingredients. Doesn't necessarily mean bad ingredients, but you just have to know what you're getting, what you're getting into and, and what that means. So check out the label. If the first ingredient is salmon meal or white fish or something like that, I mean, that, that's going to be a more expensive food, but it's going to be a, a better food for most of your fish. Are you familiar with um, Dr. Jesse Sanders? She's a vet uh, out in California. I'm not sure where though, um, but she has a really great presentation on like reading a fish food label and how to figure out like if the ingredients are in there are high quality or not. And she talked about some of the very same things you just mentioned, like what you need to be looking for, like what fish can't use and what they need. Okay, we should tag that somehow. You're, you're the person that knows that, Hillary. So we should. I will whatever, tag her. Whatever you do, that <laughs> people can. Now that you've mentioned her, look at that because it's it's not hard to learn how to read a fish um, food label, and it'll give you a, a good amount of information uh, that you, that will allow you to make proper choices for your fish. I mean, and he, yep. here's here's another. Um, common mistake that people make, especially if you're a freshwater hobbyist going into the, the marine, is that marine fish can't produce highly unsaturated fatty acids. That's hoofus for short. Um, so they have to be fed. That has to be in their food. And like I said, we're not going to get super technical, but a big difference between freshwater fish and saltwater fish is that Freshwater fish can produce the highly unsaturated fatty acids they need from the polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are cheaper. It's just cheaper ingredient. But if you're feeding a cheap, mostly freshwater diet to your marine fish, chances are your marine fish are not going to be as healthy as, and as colorful as they could be because they're not getting the highly unsaturated fatty acids they need. And I'm sure she covers this. And um, I, have a I have a much more detailed talk, Hillary. I should post that on YouTube or something. Um, but I give it clubs we can, we can uh, get more detail on that. So basically it's, it's the, the meaning of this first few minutes is that fish need specific diets and it isn't good. I mean, we have a responsibility for, for our pets and it isn't good to feed them just the cheapest thing that you can find. It, it may not be nutritionally complete and it may not give them all the, the nutrition that they need. And if your fish are dull, if they're uh, fat, yeah, fat fish, you know, if they, they definitely get fatty deposits, then, then look at what you're feeding and try to, uh, vary their diet. Another common food is brine shrimp. And brine shrimp are, you know, they're swimming around and the fish eat them, but they're kind of like crickets to, to the reptile world. Empty shells. They're, I mean, baby brine shrimp have a lot of, a fair amount of nutritional quality, but an adult brine shrimp's nutrition just isn't all that much. Um, and so, so what do you do? There's, okay, we've covered rough, you know, quickly the flakes and the pellets and look for flakes and pellets. If you have saltwater fish way up in there should be some salmon meal, fresh water. You can have white fish meal and they'll have things like hydro, uh, hydrolyzed protein meal. And that means they soaked it in water before and helped it break down. Um, stay away, well, not stay away, but just, just re realize that meals with a lot of wheat, a lot of corn, soy, um, you don't want to feed those exclusively to your fish. You want to vary the diet and understand what type of fish you have. If you have a grouper, that is, you know, a higher level carnivore that's used to eating other fish. It needs a diet different than if you have 
uh, yellow tangs or um, other other fish that are much more vegetarian. So there's three general classifications: omnivorous fish, so om, or herb, herbivorous fish, herbivores. They generally eat algae and plants but you have to remember that as they're on scraping on the rocks or eating the leaves there's all sorts of little creatures that are in that algae so they're get they're getting some animal material too but it's not their primary thing omnivores they basically eat anything you know they're herbivorous and the third category carnivorous which carnivorous is basically meat eaters but even a meat eater understand that the fish that's it it is eating down the line probably ate a lot of veggies so they get their vet their their greens by ingesting a food that had a lot of greens in it so um because that brings up a third thing that's not the best uh feeding just goldfish to your oscars that's always been you know since i was a little kid people buy the goldfish feed her goldfish, throw them in the tank and watch the Oscars or whatever, eat the goldfish. That is not a nutritionally complete diet. And if your Oscars losing its color, if it's getting pitting on the, the head and the sides and the flanks, that's all a sign that it's poor nutrition. And, and you really need to, to vary the diet and feed a, a better diet. And then your field, Hillary, public aquariums, they tend to grow fat fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if, I used if, to have a, a fox face, rabbit fish. <laughs> I nicknamed Shamu because he was that, like, he was that rotund. I'm like, you should never be that fat. Yeah. The best way is when you're doing, if you're doing the behind the scenes, and you can get up above the tank and you see the fish coming to you, just kind of. Picture it as a football. If it's shaped like a football swimming at you, just just big and you know in the center bulging out, that is a fat fish, which is not a healthy fish. Shouldn't be that fat, um, and and uh, that's a diet that's heavy in in fats and in carbs, which which just leads to the fat fatness. Fish get most of the energy, so so. You know, if you're a high in, you know, performance athlete, what are you eating? Like you see on the Tour de France, which is coming up here soon, after every race, the riders are eating tons of, of pasta carbs. Why? Because our body breaks that down into sugars and minerals and things. And it's a way to uh, get that back into your system. Fish can't do that. Fish get the energy they need by proteins. And, and most of their diet is heavier in protein and low in carbs. But that's an expensive food. You know, the, the higher the protein content in the food, the more expensive. And also, the higher the protein, if, if the fish isn't exercise i mean is it swimming you're constantly swimming and if the fish is being overfed uh then that tends to accumulate as fat and it overfed you know we're, we're kind of trained from a early stage you know feed what your fish will eat uh two three times a day you know in in three to five minutes but it depends on the fish and it depends on how active that fish is. You know, early in my career, when I was raising food fish, uh, our goal was to raise that fish to a sellable size as quickly as possible. And so we fed a high protein diet and they were in circular tanks and they were swimming. Uh, these were hybrid striped bass. They always, you know, they swum in a circle all time so they're getting lots of exercise and we're trying to grow them fast but you have to be careful because you're feeding dollar you know that high protein food costs a lot more than a low protein food and if you have your fish in an aquarium and they're just sitting there you know sort of just not sitting fish don't sit but just uh 
static, not swimming a lot, do you really need to feed your fish three or four times a day? And the answer is no. And historically, I don't feed fish on Sundays. Just, uh, you know, there's a day where they, they don't need their, their, to be fed all the time. And especially if you have little kids, you know, they bring their friends over, everybody wants to feed and overfeeding leads to poor water quality and it leads to fat, unhealthy fish. Which is something that we never want. Right. Yeah. So, so, okay. You, you know, Dr. Tim, you've told us all the bad things. What do we do? Well, yes, we, you know, I said feed uh, better foods, um, feed maybe, uh, you know, better food less often is, is not bad advice at all, but also we make a food. This is our beneficial fish food, which we came out with a few years ago, and it has no gluten in it. So it's, it's a pr frozen food that you prepare. So you don't have to keep it in the freezer and comes in a pouch or a uh, convenient uh, large pouch with a scoop that makes 10 trays. And what you have in this food is just the protein and the minerals, probiotics and coloring agents and antioxidants that fish need. And the, there's only two diets. There's the marine diet, which the primary ingredient is salmon meal. And then there's the freshwater diet where the primary ingredient is white fish meal. And why? Because again, the salmon meal is high in the highly unsaturated fatty acids, the hoofas, that your marine fish need. And what we have in there, a key ingredient is kelp. Because purified kelp will form a gel when it's exposed to hot water. And so that's why to use our food, you take a half a cup of water, microwave it for um, about a minute and a half to two minutes, depending on your microwave till it's just starting to boil. And then you add that to the uh, food and stir for a couple of minutes. And that triggers this binding process. And then here's where things get really interesting. Instead of offering 20 feet of food, what do you do? We have two foods, and then we have these foods and treats that you can add, such as freeze-dried peas or dried seaweed or uh, garlic. And there's a lot of stuff out there. People say garlic doesn't work. Garlic works, Okay has to be the right type. Garlic oil is a mess, but this is actually heat dried garlic that is in a pepper grinder. All these ingredients come in a pepper grinder and you grind it over the liquid after you've stirred for a couple of minutes and it's going to become part of the food once it freezes. Or our seaweeds are, are collect. This is human grade, hundred percent organic seaweeds, three types collected from Eastern, you know, up, up in uh, Canada and Maine off the, you know, in the U S and these are really great. They're full of minerals and nutrients and all sorts of trace elements. And you can, that you can grind right over the tank as a treat or our freeze dried peas. This is human grade peas. No messing around trying to, you know, cut a pea, a, a, a in squishing it and making a mess, talking about your fingers stinking. You know, you know, it's just freeze dried. You can grind it right into the food or right over a tank and betta. If you have betta fish, you should try our peas. They betta fish just love the freeze dried peas being ground over their tank. So you can tailor, tailor. We have that type of herbivorous material, but we also um, sell spirulina powder. So this is spirulina grown on the big island of Hawaii, uh, generally for human uh, consumption, but we, we use it for fish. And then we also have mealworms and gomeris and river shrimp on the you know, more meat side. And they all vary in terms of the fat that they have. Mealworms have tons of fat. 
which you don't always want to feed, but it's nice if you've got a fish that maybe is not eating very well or is hesitant to eat, mealworms are kind of like French fries and there's nobody that lets a French fry go by. You have a fish that's been a disease treatment. Um, you know, when you're sick and you're coming off, you're getting better. What does the doctor say? Eat. Why you need nutrition, eat anything. At that time, you can you know, eat anything you want. They just want you to eat. And it's the same with fish. We offer uh, ingredients that are higher in fat for the times that you need that. If you're trying to get a fish to get in condition uh, for spawning, maybe you want to increase a little bit of the fat level in its diet. You can do this by grinding all this into the liquid, or if you have some secret ingredient that you want, you can put it in there. And then you pour this mix into these silicone ice cube trays. And then it makes these cubes that are probably a little three eighths of an inch by three eighths of an inch uh, cube. And they're perfect size. They're just a great size. And you, we have videos for this. If you go to our website, look at our beneficial fish food, there's videos that talk about this and show you how to make the food and stuff like that. But the point being, you can make the food and it gives you a couple of benefits. One is it's much more nutritious for the fish because it doesn't have all the waste that they can't, they ingest it, but they don't digest it. So, uh, and it, your fish are going to just be much healthier. It has pro, real probiotics. You know, everybody's out there saying their food has probiotics. We list the brand on there. If other companies want to copy it, fine. It's because it's not cheap, but it's been shown to have probiotic effects for fish and for shrimp and other aquatic animals. And we have nice color enhancing agents. And that comes from the added the spirulina and marigolds and the other ingredients we put in there. And I tell people, you, you, your fish, you will see the change in the color and the behavior of your fish using our beneficial fish food. Um, you, you freeze it after you mix it up, you put the tray in the freezer for two hours and then take it out and you pop out the cubes and you put them in some Tupperware or a bag or something like that and keep them frozen and they're good for a month. When you want to feed, you just take the cube out and you can put it in the tank or you can, you know, I, I have a little tr lid, a little, uh, I don't know what the lid was to, but I put it on the lid for a few minutes, let it warm up a little bit. And then I don't care. I mean, my hands are in fish tanks all the time. So I squeeze it a little bit depending on what I'm feeding and the pieces go all over and the fish tear it up. If you're trying to get to the bottom of you know, the tank, the food to the bottom, the cube will not dissolve as soon as it hits the water. It will keep its shape. It will slowly sink once it gets to the bottom, if it gets to the bottom. If you have fish in the tank, it probably won't get to the bottom. Um, but once it's there, you will find that all, you know any of your invertebrates will go after it crabs shrimp they can pick at it at their delight it's a great food for everybody even corals coral tanks just smash it up into the water current and you've got all sorts of nutritional ingredient nutritious ingredients that the corals will ingest and and like i said you will see the difference after a few weeks feeding our fish food the second benefit is you're not polluting your tank with all these carbs, which get broken down into ammonia and detritus. And ba basically you're getting better nutrition and less waste in the tank. So the tank stays cleaner, your filter stays cleaner, less ammonia. I mean, we've talked about this, less ammonia means less uh, as you know, hydrogen ions that are produced. So you're uh, pH and doesn't drop as fast or alkalinity is not consumed. The whole system is healthier because you're putting a lot less waste into the tank, less phosphate, less nitrate being produced, which means less, less chance of algae because you just don't have those nutrients that the algae need. So you get lots of different benefits by feeding uh, a higher quality food. And as you'll find, it's no more expensive than other foods and 
you know, Hilly was talking about preparation. You could compare, prepare this in five minutes or less and then put it in the freezer two hours into Tupperware and you're done. And the tray makes 90 cubes. I mean, we're getting now, weather's turning nice. Everybody's ready to go travel, you know, and you go on vacation. You're going to have the neighbor uh, come over. So, uh, Hillary, your friend comes and cares for your pot belly pig. How do they know how to, much to feed? Um, so pig has his own like measured cup. He gets two cups of food every time they come over. And then the fish actually, so I make up a batch of beneficial right before I go. And then I have these little Tupperware containers. So I portion it out for her. My cowfish is really cute. And he always tries to convince people he needs more food. More so. food. <laughs> Feed I just portion it out and hide the rest. That's it. But you can, so you can have the person that's keeping care of your fish while you're on vacation, you know, leave a note along the lab in our fish room. Cause I'm not the one that's always feeding the fish. Cause I travel so much. I have a piece of lab tape and there's a number three, four, six. That's the number of cubes. Cause you know, they know, okay, three cubes. And so it's very simple and you can make up, you know, as many cubes as you need, put them in the freezer and who's ever keeping care of your tank or your systems can portion out according to the number that you say, I need this tank needs four cubes a day or twice a day, three cubes or something like that. And You'll know if you're overfeeding because if a cube does make it to the bottom and it's still sitting there five minutes later, cut back, you know, feed one less cube. Um, the other nice benefit of all this is that it's customizable. If should your fish become sick, you can't buy medicated fish foods anymore. That's pretty much impossible to find. But you can no, get, you cannot. yeah, you can get the medication and you can go, uh, you can talk to your vet, you can go online and you can prepare your own medicated foods. If your fish are already used to feeding on our beneficial fish food, you can add that when you're making it. Just let it cool down a little bit. Don't add it right after the, you know, you've added the boiling water, let it cool down, which it does quickly. It's not that much. And the medicine will be fine. And you can make a medicated food that your fish can, you know, ingest the medicine, which is a, in many cases, much quicker way to cure something. But again, if you're going to do that, make sure you know what you're treating for. Just don't use anything, you know, willy nilly, know what you're treating. Um, and, and may I add a personal recommendation on that? Sure. So if you've got the garlic, um, the garlic is an appetite stimulant. It, it smells really good and like they want to eat. So I usually, if I have to do medicated food, I add a little bit of extra garlic to it to kind of like some of the medications, they're just not very palatable to the fish. So adding a little bit of extra garlic helps to uh, mask that nasty medication taste and smell for them. Right. And what you do have to be careful is the spirulina, which is a great, I mean, it's such, it's so rich in minerals and things is it's not very palatable either. So don't overdose on the spirulina um, when you're making up the food. It's in a little uh, pepper shaker, not a grinder, and just sprinkle it in there. But go, don't go super heavy on it because it's bitter and it'll, it'll turn the fish off from eating your food. So if you made up your first batch and the fish aren't attacking it, maybe you went a little heavy on the spirulina. But uh, generally you... I mean, there's videos out there of people in stores and, and all, you know, all using it. And I don't know any fish that don't, that doesn't love this food. Oh yeah. No, I, I, like I said, I use it for Frank and he, he loves it. He goes like tearing after it. I have to like <laughs> sprinkle a little bit of stuff on the surface for all the chromis to distract them, to give him a chance to give the cowfish a chance to go yeah. down and actually eat it. Yeah. Uh, and like I mentioned, completely customizable uh, to what you want. And we have some hints on there and you can always contact us and say, well, I've got this group of fish or this fish. Um, freshwater shrimp, it's a wonderful food because it'll go right to the bottom and then they can just tear it apart at their leisure. It won't you know, just dissolve into the water where they can't get to it. 
uh, snails. If you've got a snail problem, you can put the food. So you you, you got to kind of lay a trap out there a little, make a little makeshift uh, um, sane or, or net, you know, in the tank that you can pull up. Sometimes I'll just use, you know, fish net, put the whole thing in the tank, put the food in the center, of the collapsed net and the, the snails will be there. Give them some time, but they will be there. And then you can just pull the whole thing up and you've got a, a net full of the snails. It's a great way to trap your um, snails out of the system. I wonder if that works on bristle worms too. I'm gonna have to give that a go. Yeah, we have to give, I've, I haven't tried it on that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know, I uh, know, Betas, you know, you can, they, they love it. People have, well, you can take, I mean, for a single betta, a cube is maybe a little too big, but what I do is just take a sharp knife and cut the cube in half and then feed that in, in, you know, crumble it up between your fingers. And uh, the, the thing I hear the most is that people talk about the color comes back because it really does with all the color enhances and natural ingredients, hundred percent natural ingredients in our food. Um, it really does make a difference. And, and it's, you know, it, it can be used exclusively all the fish in our fish room. They're fed nothing but Dr. Tim's. That's all they've been on. And our tiger barbs are unbelievably colorful. I should send you a picture, Hillary. Um, and, uh, but, you know, you can use it to supplement if, if uh, you want it to go further and you're, you're looking for convenience of some flakes and pellets. But again, as I said at the beginning, the idea is to vary the diet and, and better nutrition is healthier, more colorful fish and less pollution in the aquarium, which makes your life easier. Yes, 100%. The fewer times I have to do mega water changes for my overfeeding, the better. And your filter, uh, whatever your mechanical filter will clog less. And, um, you know, if, if you have questions, we can we maybe if we can get enough questions. We can do a whole question and answer on on fish nutrition, invertebrate oh, nutrition. Fun. Yeah, because, uh, you know, there's you go and there's all sorts of foods and some companies will have, well, this is the grommy food and this is the yellow tang food. And this is the, this fish food. And I, yeah, it's kind of split in hairs. Um, you, you know, I don't know that you really need to have 10 different fish foods out there. Um, definitely you want a food that goes to the bottom. This covers that you want a food that has uh, can we have high protein? Okay. That can be covered with our food. You want a food that has, can have high algae content. Again, that can be covered. Um, so it's very flexible for all types of fish and in, in, in invertebrates, um, you know, they're always out there. Uh, crabs, shrimp, uh, sea stars, um, really everybody. Oh, you know what would be cool? Um, watching sea stars eat. I, there's a couple of people I've seen online that like their sea stars come up to the edge of the tank and they put food and they just hand them food. If, if anybody is listening to this and you have one and you feed it like that, if you want to feed a cube of the beneficial food and like take a photo or a video of it for me, I will send you some swag. Well, how about this, Hillary? We, we have disposable trays because the most important Expensive part of this is the 100% silicone tray. But if you respond somehow, Hillary, you figured that out. I delegated. We will mail you a free pouch of the fish food and okay. uh, a tray. It's not going to you know, last more than once or twice. Um, and you can try it out. And yeah. um, everybody that posts something, then you can pick a winner, Hiller, and we can send them a whole startup kit with the real tray and everything like that. But, you know, we'll be flexible on this, but if you'd like to try contact us through 
all the different ways you can contact us, including info <laughs> Dr. Tim's and say, Hey, Hillary and Dr. Tim, I want to try this fantastic fish food that you guys are raving about. And uh, we need an address folks. Can't send it to your email. <laughs> we need some place to send it. Uh, we're not going to spam you anything. We will send you a free sample, uh, fresh water, salt water, uh, make a note of that. We'll send you a free sample of fish food and this offer. we got to put a date on it, right? Hillary. Cause it's going to last oh, yeah. forever. Yeah. So got to give it a limit. <laughs> How about so, uh, the, the podcast will probably be out next week. So. And uh, well, we'll give people time. We'll give you to the end of July. 2022. Okay. That's like All eight right. weeks. Okay. That's plenty of time. Come on. I, email I, us. I should say time. one, one per person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One per person. <laughs> For, for family, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Something, yeah. Don't don't abuse it, but but we'll send you some stuff. We'll even maybe we'll throw some swag in there, and then we'll pick up a grand prize or figure out something. But we really think you'd be uh, impressed using this food, and it's not that difficult or hard to make. So. Nope, exactly. Right. So I th I think that covers. You know, we've got the treats on there that the food you know with the, like the peas and the seaweed the uh different types of shrimp and the mealworms can be ground right over the tanks so that's very easy don't don't um i don't, I don't think you want to grind the freeze-dried garlic right over your tank uh, spirulina yeah corals like it. i mean it's algae but i just be careful it's a powder a little bit goes a long way so i wouldn't really say shake that over your tank either use some yeah please sense. don't do that please yeah. please do that over like a plate or a bowl and then add it to your tank yeah, yeah. and also because we've had this before as i mentioned when you're making the food you have to add it to water we've had people just open up the pouch and pour it in the tank and that folks is a mess and we take no responsibility if you don't read the directions on the back and do that how's that for a disclaimer you always gotta say it yeah so. All right. any last minute questions hillary that you can think of i don't i don't think so i think this takes care of pretty much everything but if anybody does have any questions i'm always around on social media happy to answer questions that you guys have you can send them to the info email as well um, leave them on YouTube. I don't know about Podbean. Do we get comments on Podbean? I haven't seen any. But yeah, send it to them. Send it to us on social media. Yep. Don't forget, it's endorsed by Frank. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know who Frank is, you're going to have to ask Killer. We're not going to tell you. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it would probably be endorsed by the pig too if he could get a hold of it. <laughs> well, I was going <laughs> to. I was going to mention this and then I didn't, but what the heck? We have found that chickens love this feed. Uh, don't ask me how, but yes, chickens. If you make this up and then you put the cubes out and you're raising chickens, they love the Dr. Tim's fish food cubes. All right. I'm going to need to get more because I'm going to have chickens in like the near future. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. All right, everyone. This has been Dr. Tim and Hillary <laughs> on a, another session of Dr. Tim's Aquatics podcast. Uh, until next time, everyone take care.